Okay, so welcome. This is the mathematical component for the introduction to AQA A-level psychology. So what we're going to be looking at is outlining the weighting of maths in the A-level psychology. How many marks, what's the weighting of the numeracy mathematical component in the linear A-level psychology course? We're going to review GCSE transferable skills, so hopefully this will instill quite a bit of confidence in a lot of you. Um, a lot of the skills uh, that we require in the A-level psychology course are a recap from what you've covered in GCSE. And we're also going to be showing you an example of the mass component in, in an exam style questions. So in terms of weighting, at least... 10% of the marks in assessments for psychology will require the use of mathematical skills. And as I've said before, although research method is assessed in paper two and is worth double the amount of marks, so instead of 24, it's worth 48 marks, research methods isn't solely assessed in paper two. It is assessed in each paper and each topic. You can expect research methods questions throughout all three papers, throughout all topics. So the particular skill that we're looking for um, and that you'll be requiring in terms of mathematical skills in this A-level psychology course is really the skill of higher tier GCSE maths. It will be taught and it will be refreshed at A-level, but again, there's lots of resources on tutor to that you can utilise in your own time to kind of brush up and refresh on these skills as well. So in terms of what's transferable, just to demonstrate, in terms of GCSE, um, you would have covered things like ratios, fractions, percentages, decimals, for example. And the mathematical skill in A-level psychology, you need to know arithmetic, which would include all of those. Handling data, algebra, graphs as well, all skills that you require in A-level psychology. And again, hopefully you can read this table and have some confidence and recognition that you've covered um, all of these in GCSE psychology. But again, can't stress this enough, you will be uh, recapping this and be taught it in the A-level, linear A-level psychology course as well. So you will be recapping this as well with your teacher. So GCSE transferable skills here. Um, this is just some worked examples. If you did need a refresh, again, uh, you've got a lot of resources on tutor to you that you can utilise to brush up on these skills. Um, but you might want to pause this and just have a look through the examples and the answers and maybe just check you've got the same answer here for these uh, four kind of example questions on fraction, percentage, significant figures and order of magnitude. OK, so moving on now. In terms of graphs, we're going to have a look at a couple of uh, questions now that you would expect to see um, in an exam style um, paper. So you've got a stem here um, and you can read this in your own time. Feel free to pause. You've got a table of findings and then you've got a question which is asking you for four marks to sketch a bar chart to represent that data. So have a go at sketching a bar graph um, if you want. Pause the video and um, we'll go through the answer um, next. So here for this particular stem, we should have something that looks a bit like this. Um, we do need gaps between the bars um, because they are distinct. They're not continuous, they're categories. Some of the things that we need to make sure we need to attain the four marks here for drawing a graph are things like the title. We need that. So if you've got a title, we need to make sure the axes are labelled correctly. We need to make sure that it's actually a bar chart, obviously. And lastly, we need to make sure that it's plotted correctly with the correct scale. And again, you won't necessarily have, uh, you know, colours in the exam, but you can shade uh, a couple of the bars in to, to make sure you've got that key there. OK, let's look at another question. So here we've got another stem with a table of findings and here the question is sketch a suitable graphical display to represent the data in this table. Now you'll notice here they haven't specified which graph. They've just said sketch a suitable graph. Now that's quite important because it's quite a common question. Now what you will cover in your A-level psychology course is when to use each graph for what type of data. So some of the graphs you'll be covering are bar chart, scatter graph, histogram for example. So I won't give anything away, 
pause the video if you wish to do so and have a go at maybe trying to plot this on a graph that you think is suitable and then we'll go through the answer. Okay, so the graph we've got here, we should have a scatter graph. Um, we've got two scores. We've got a stress rating and we've got a score. Okay, so it should look something like this with our stress rating there on the bottom axis and then we've also got a um, score of psychology test on the other axis with our graph title as well and our correct plots and scales. OK, so a, another question here, moving away from graphs. Again, we've got a stem, we've got a table of findings. This time the question's asking for a percentage. Now, specifically the percentage of the sample that had their father as the primary caregiver. So I'm going to let you read this, pause the video if you wish to do so, and have a go at working out this percentage and we'll go through the answer. Okay, so what percentage of the sample had their fathers as the primary caregiver? So primary caregiver, in terms of the father, we've got 22, 4 and 5. We also need to work out what the total is. So here we're going to add the total sample up, so all the scores. So we've got 42, we've got 9, we've got 7, 22, 4 and 5. And then the total just for the fathers is 31. So what we're therefore going to do is 31 divided by 89 is... 0.34 and we're obviously going to make that into a percentage so times that by 100 hopefully you would have got 34.8 percent and if you didn't get that again like I said before there's lots of resources on tutor to and online that you can use to kind of brush up on these skills so okay our last question we're going to look at again we've got another stem here with some table of findings again this time we've got Again, calculate the percentage, this time increase, in the mean time it took participants to solve the five anagrams when listening to classical music compared to the control group. Now, it clearly says here, show your calculations. And lastly, most importantly, it says, give your answer to three significant figures. So we're assessing kind of two things here, aren't we? So we're assessing percentages and also if you can give an answer to three significant figures. So again, pause the video and have a go at working this out, guys, and then we'll go through the answer. Okay, so what we have here, we need to work out the mean difference first. So we're going to um, subtract 63 from 68, and we should have 5. So then we're going to put 5 into our 63, and you should get 0 0.0793. We're going to times that by 100 for a percentage. 7.936 and don't forget it's asking us to do up to three significant figures so we should have as an answer 7.94 percent really important to show your workings and the reason for that is and most, most of you will be familiar with this hopefully from um, GCSE and that is even if you do get the wrong answer the reason why we stress to show the workings is even if you get the wrong answer if part of your workings are correct you can still pick up marks so that's really important to make sure that you show your full workings out in the exam. Okay, so the aims of the session today that we've covered are outlining the weighting of maths in A-level psychology, the review of GCSE transferable skills in terms of numeracy and mathematical requirement, and lastly we had a look at those examples of the mathematical component questions that you may find in the exam.